Welcome back, everybody. Level M Diecast Matchbox action today. No, it's not an unboxing. No, it's not a batch review. We are filling in holes, gaps in the collection. There are 27 holes in total to fill today. Um, all of these models will have something different. We'll go over why this is being added to the collection. Uh, we'll kind of go from oldest to newest. Um, most of these models are probably not going to be very desirable, but some of this stuff is a little bit harder to find these days. Uh, we're going to kick this off. Do have a bunch of 2000 logo models. This is when these were these were pretty hot in 2000, 1999, 2000. Um, they were quite sought after, that's for sure. Uh, this is the Sea Rescue Plane. It does have opening wings. Um, this is the 2000 logo. I did not have the 2000 logo one. So we'll pull him out. This is when Matchbox was making some pretty good castings. It does have a rotating uh, propeller on the front and then it does have opening wings to make it the kind of pontoon boat so that's pretty cool again there is that matchbox 2000 logo i had the regular just didn't have the logo version so we're going to add that one now another one we're going to take a look at mercedes-benz track 1600 turbo yep 2000 logo again model i already had but i didn't have the logo version there is your logo on the back, Matchbox 2000. These were considered, quote-unquote, treasure hunts uh, back in the day. They were only on the first initial runs of the models, and then they did not do them anymore. So they were pretty popular for a while. Uh, they were actually pulling a little bit of coin at some point in time, but nowadays you can get most every single one of these for uh, you know just a couple of bucks. So this guy does have rubber tires, by the way, which is pretty sweet. Definitely like that casting a lot. Looks pretty good. Another one in the, uh, you know, farm realm. Uh, this is the cattle truck. This is a Dodge cattle truck. There's your 2000 logo on the front. Again, just another one. 2000 logo. Uh, these all are going to be 2000 logos to kick it off. It does have the rubber band pieces already separated and failed, which is fine. Comes with two cattle in the back in blue. Yellow window looks pretty decent. Harkens all the way back to the Lesney era of this particular casting. So it's pretty cool. Looks, you know, it's it's a pretty nice thing that they just don't do things like that nowadays. Uh, continuing a little bit with the farm theme, this is the delivery truck. This is the uh, quote unquote first edition of the delivery truck. This was a generic and it was actually a pretty good generic, um, basically an Isuzu uh, cab over. So there is your 2000 logo there on the front. This one does have a plastic rear section. The rest of it is metal. Even the base is metal. Does not tilt or do anything like that. But there is your 2000 logo there on the front. Does have opening doors though in the back. Which is pretty cool. They also used this same cab setup for a flatbed tow truck. So I really feel like they had a lot of potential for this. If they didn't uh, you know, really change things up in 2001. Um, Another one here, this is the Ford Expedition in military garb. Again, 2000 logo right there on the front. Blister is a bit yellowed on this one, but that's fine because we are freeing the piece. Cracking shit open. Uh, pretty good casting. Um, I always thought that Matchbox did a really good job on this Expedition. They used it a lot. Did have suspension on it, which is pretty nice. Something that they don't do ever anymore. So... It's, it's pretty cool. Plus, you know what they don't do? They don't do military stuff anymore. No military stuff. Uh, this is the Shovel Nose Tractor. This is another one that harkens back to the Lesney era. There is your 2000 logo right there on the top of the cab. In black print with the silver. Looking pretty, pretty good. Interesting deco on this one. They were kind of themed up. And they kind of matched um, this particular year. Deets on the bottom, 1975. So this has been in like, I don't know, about 30-something different variations of that one. It just keeps on rolling. Another commercial-type piece of equipment. This is the GMC bucket truck. Again, this is when Matchbox was making some very, very good stuff. And they had a very, very large budget. Um, this one, there is the 2000 logo right there on the windshield. Now, this one is cool for a bazillion reasons. For one, it's... Three axles, which is not common. 
Uh, did get uh, three Tampa passes, so you get full front Tampa. Looks pretty good with your GMC. Full side Tampa's on each side. Then, of course, it does have the raised up boom. The boom does rotate around 360 as well. And then it even has this little separate cab section here with the little drill piece that you could use to drill stuff as you move through. They retooled this later on. Uh, I believe they retooled this in like 2002 uh, and got rid of the third axle. It just became a two axle setup and then they kind of simplified the bucket. So this was, you know, something really, really cool. Very large, very big casting. Looks very, very good. Again, Matchbox was making super cool stuff at this time. Obviously, they don't make stuff anywhere near as cool as that now. Uh, this is the Sea Rescue boat. This one is a little bit harder to find. The 2000 logo is right there on the back. Very, very small on the gold metal base. The rest of this is plastic. This, however, does have an opening feature because a lot of stuff from this era did a lot of things. Matchbox made really good stuff. They had these nice antennas on there as well. They tend to uh, bend a lot. Um, separate section for this little tower thing at the top here too. Uh, but this does have opening feature. There you go. It does open up. Shows you a little details in there for maybe some life rafts or something like that. Looks looks okay. It's kind of interesting. Just kind of snaps closed. Nothing fancy. Sea rescue boat. Another one here, uh, we're getting almost done with the 2000 logos. This is the Audi TT Coupe. There it is right there on the windshield. There is also a, uh, I believe there's a wheel variation on this one too. Um, I think it came with the flower wheels, I think. Uh, it might have been the, the convertible, but um, this one, you know, it's, it's a good casting. Um, it never really got like premium versions, I guess, but uh, did have suspension and um, the ones that had front and rear tampos were pretty nice. This one just has some side tampo detail on there. So it's uh, it's pretty good. It's a uh, glorified Volkswagen Beetle, though. That's all it is. <clears throat> all right, we're going to move up a little bit. We're going to move to, uh, let's see here. I believe these are all going to be 2002. So there is your 50th logo. This came out in 2002. So uh, Matchbox did not do anything in 2001. In 2002, they brought this back as trying to cater to the collectors um, and try to create hype again. The 50th logo did not go over all that well because um, the collector market was kind of kind of getting rough. I mean, uh, Husky's on the side of this sport track. Now, this sport track's pretty nice. Uh, it does have a opening tailgate, and then, of course, it does have the little uh, piece that does fold out here. Uh, this one seems to be a little bit loose. Get that to move around. Looks like it might be a little uh, too folded in. So it's a little bit crunched this way, so it doesn't quite hold in there. Uh, but it had that little accessory that folded out, which was pretty nice. Uh, this was the last time that they did that. They only did it for two versions. Uh, they did it in the original release Deco, and then they did it in this one. And then it was, of course, retooled. They got rid of that, and they made it not have an opening part because, of course, they did. Uh, but there is your sport track with the 50th logo. Another model that's uh, not um, desirable, um, but this one is with the logo. There's the logo right there on the front. You can barely see it right there in the corner. This is the Fire Hovercraft. The white part is metal. Everything else is plastic, which is terrible. does have a moving feature, though, which is pretty okay, I guess. Um, this little snorkel part thing does rotate around uh nothing fancy it does just say h2o on the side i mean as a hovercraft it looks okay um but just you know this is not stuff that collectors want it's just it's just not um another one from the 50th this is the ford f-150 the original f-150 casting that they did uh well not the original original f-150 guys because that one was a lifted four by four uh but this is of uh, this generation 50th logo right there on the hood. Does have those uh, lace wheels on it, which don't look too bad. The bigger lace wheels. Uh, it says H2O surfboards on the side. Kind of interesting. Um, who knows? Maybe uh, Michael Rolda had something to do with some of these decals we might see in here. But be pretty cool if he did. So nothing fancy about that one. 
Generic castings. Uh, so this one has kind of a trifecta. Uh, actually, it's like a quadfecta. Now, this uh, 2002 is generic ambulance. It's nothing fancy. It's, you know, the deco is actually not that bad on this one, but uh, the, the model itself is, is pretty bad. Now, it does have opening doors in the back, which is kind of a cool feature. There's a bed already in there, which is kind of interesting, these giant doors. Now, this guy does come with a wheel variation. It does come with these particular wheels right here. It does come with those lace, big lace wheels. Um, this is the four-dot dome wheels. I'm not really sure exactly what the kids call them these days, but we were calling them the dome wheels, four-dot domes. Uh, there is your 50th logo. Now, because this one came in a wheel variation, however, the wheel variation was the later production run, there is a small possibility that you may get this guy with logo and then without logo with these wheels and then potentially the one with the lace wheels with a logo but i highly doubt that exists because that came on the later run with the wheel variation to it so it's unlikely that that actually carried on because the logos would have been done at that point in time this is the next one up this is the emergency power truck again 50th logo you see it right there on the side you know, Matchbox was trying to think outside the box a little bit. This was a generic casting, which was kind of cool. It was a, a kind of a setup for um, power. So it goes up, and then it does have a one-stage boom. If I can get it to lift. There it goes. Okay. does have a one-stage boom lift. This is just like a light truck that you might see on a you know, construction side or something like that, except for this one is self-driven. Um, it does have tow hitches in both the front and the back, so you could hitch a bunch of these together and tow them around uh, together. It's kind of interesting. It does have the Matchbox logo right there on the casting. So other than that, it's just uh, not good. It's the saw blade wheels, just not good. Not good at all. Here's something that somebody might like. This is the Volkswagen Beetle. Now, you'll see this one does not have a logo. That's because... I already have the one with the logo. This one does not have a logo. So very interesting. Uh, there'll be some of those in here, but we're still filling a gap. It's just a little bit of a change of pace from the rest of those. So this was the original version of the Volkswagen Beetle that they did, uh, which has since been retooled. Looks way better nowadays, but this is the original. It uh, does have an opening hood. Just has a spare tire in there. Does have a uh, separate interior from the engine right here. It is part of the uh, base, which nowadays the engine is now part of the interior on the new one. And of course, they got rid of the light bar. Um, but this is the original version of the four wheel, four by four Volkswagen Beetle casting. All right, Chevy truck. To my Chevy truck. Uh, this is the K1500 four by four. Uh, big lifted truck. Always wish Matchbox would have done a. Well, they kind of did this one that was not lifted, and they kind of did it for tw um, Taco Bell, uh, but it didn't it didn't quite look right. I think if they had made an actual casting of this uh, generation of uh, basically Silverado, it would have been pretty nice. Uh, this one, again, 50th logo, since I already have the non-logo, needed the logo. Now, here's the thing. So all of these models we're looking at, if I, if I got the logo, I already didn't have it. If I didn't have the logo, I already had the logo. So this, all these models complete um, the particular versions of this casting with the exception of the potential of that one. I do have the one with the lace wheels, the one with the dome that doesn't have a logo, and that one with the logo. So kind of an interesting mix. Uh, this is another one of those models that does have wheel variation. has the same one in the front here with the big lace wheels. Uh, this one does come with and without the logo with the dome wheels, although I don't think I've ever seen the logo on the lace wheel on the front, but it does have that variation. This is the Snow Doctor, and yes, in case you're curious, it does have real actual treads in the back, and yes, they actually really roll, which is pretty nice. The whole back section in blue is plastic. The orangish kind of color is metal. Uh, not too bad for a generic. Kind of interesting that they built, they did the logo this direction rather than that direction. But there you go. Put that guy down there. Now, this is an interesting one. This is not a logo model. Okay, we did not get this because it's a logo model. And also see, the card art is very interesting because 
This is a very, very, very late run. Uh, 2000, this is a 2000 model. Very late run into 2001. So this got the new updated card art. Um, however, it did not, um, you know, change over anything here. It is still number 59 from the 2000 series, the FedEx delivery truck. Um, must have been late in the run. But what you will realize here is, and I'm going to challenge you guys, if you have this FedEx truck in your collection, uh, take a look at it because it's very likely that you have a clear window. Uh, this is a blue window. Now, I will be 100% upfront and honest and frank with you guys. I had no idea that the blue window existed. Uh, this was actually pointed out to me by a buddy um, when I was looking at this model. And thankfully, I was able to scoop this up because my buddy pointed it out for me. Appreciate that, Colt. Thank you very much. Um, so this is the blue window version. Obviously, I didn't have, never even knew existed. But this came at the last run of the FedEx delivery truck. A very, very end of the 2000 production at all. Um, so they must have changed the window for some reason. But uh, definitely doesn't look as good as the clear. But now that we have this blue one, which is pretty nice, we will add that in there. I always did like this box truck a lot. It is all metal. Um, the whole thing, except for the chrome base. It is based on the Econoline, obviously. Just box in on the back. Nice FedEx on the back. I don't know if FedEx just doesn't really license much anymore, but you just don't see that on anybody. Nice good details on there. Then Super Chrome Base, Ultra Chrome, and then, of course, Super Suspension. But, yes, this thing is quite heavy. Uh, it's quite a bit of metal, and it's pretty thick. So we'll put him right in the front. All right, we're going to fast forward all the way to 2003 and 2004 because, yes, we are going to talk some Hero City. And, yes, Matchbox, again, tried to bring that nostalgia flavor back of the logo models. Uh, this time as Hero City. So you can see there is a logo right there. Hero City logo. It was the same uh, situation as all the rest of these. 2000 logos, 50th anniversary logo. Um, they all were the quote-unquote treasure hunts. Uh, this uh, Hero City stuff is actually quite difficult to find these days. It's not valuable. It's still junk. The problem is, is that just they didn't sell a lot of it when it was on the pegs because people didn't want it because it was junk. And it's still junk. But as a completist here at Level M, which is the way we are, we need to have these. Uh, this is the Speedboat. Looks pretty good. It's actually a pretty decent casting, I think. It uh, does have that rotating ro radar uh, in the back with the dual motors. I think this is actually pretty decent for a generic. Uh, nothing really all that great about it, but it's a generic. Uh, moving through, we got another Expedition. This guy with the Flower Wheels Metro Alarm. Not a, not too bad of a deco considering most of the Hero City stuff is junk. And trust me, we got some doozies coming up. But there again is your Hero City logo right there on the hood. Did have the light bar added in as a separate piece. This casting was never modified to include that in the mix. So it always wasn't added on light bar as they used it. Otherwise, they just stopped using it. Still had suspension at this time which was pretty nice. Blue window was an interesting choice. But other than that, not too bad, not too shabby. So we like that one. Thought we liked that one. All right, Chevrolet Avalanche. Pine Forest Deco on the side. There is your logo right there on the back by the gas station, or gas station, the gas cap. Uh, it does have the saw blade wheels on it. Uh, this Avalanche was one of the few things that came out of the kind of Hero City era uh, as a pretty decent casting. It's a little small. But I think it looks pretty good. It does say Chevy Avalanche on the back. Does have the bed covered up. I think this casting is actually pretty good. Not too shabby. I think Race Grooves might agree with me that this is probably pretty good casting as well. Um, so there you go. Just with the logo. Now, this is the only model in this entire mix that I don't have the other version of. Uh, so this Hero City. Now, there are still Hero City models I don't have. It's pretty rare. There's not that many, but there are some that I don't have. And this was one that I didn't. So now I do have the logo. There's the logo right there. This is the Land Rover Discovery. Um, I actually didn't even have this version at all. So I'm pretty happy to add this one. It says Bighorn Forest on the side. Looks pretty decent. I'm not sold on the red window, but the Discovery casting was pretty good. This is also a Hero City era casting. Um... They, they, they weren't that great back then, and the bases were not great at all. Um, they were pretty bland, pretty pretty low-key. 
But uh, they did they did give us some decent castings. Not a lot, but some. Uh, this definitely was not one of those. <laughs> uh, this is just the tanker truck, the emergency tanker truck. I call it the Hero City tanker truck. Uh, there is the giant logo on the hood. Huge logo. Uh, this one, um, don't know if it still has the feature, but we'll see if it does. So the original version of this actually had that uh, hose you could pull out in the back, kind of like Hot Wheels did with their Peterbilt tanker. Uh, this one does not have that hose pull out anymore, so that feature is gone on this version. It does have an actual see-through tank. A little bit logo on the side, saw blade wheels. Not horrific as a generic, but it's not good. It's not horrific, but it's not good. And it does come with a trailer hitch, which is interesting. So uh, the interesting thing about this is this casting is like a six or seven parts to, to make this casting, which is just ridiculous. They had some relatively large budgets um, in the 2001 to 2003 series until uh, everything fell apart for them in 2004. Uh, this is the generic taxi. There is your logo right there. Uh, just another one that I didn't have. I have the original with the uh, without the logo. And now I have the one with the logo. Nothing fancy about this one. Just a generic taxi. Another Hero City era casting. Just nothing doing. Uh, blue windows. Kind of weird. Uh, this is one of the worst ones that came out of the Hero City era. This is the uh, motorcycle with sidecar. There you can already see the logo on the front. Um, there are some significant changes to the uh, yellow paint too on some of these models, like mid-run. Uh, the yellow got significantly darker. So there's a couple of variations out there if you're a, a shade variation nut. Uh, some of them are very dramatic though. I do have one floating around somewhere. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. It does have a completely brand new different wheel than where you're used to with the three spoke. Um, there are three of them, obviously. There is the base Dietz. Can't really read it because it's all yellow. Uh, kind of a two-part, uh, you know, assembly part there. Some some riveted and some uh, screwed together. All right, we got a couple more here. Uh, wrapping up Crappy Hero City. This one does not have a logo because I had the logo version. The original one with the logo would be right here, which I already have. This was the kind of the replacement for the super fast uh, snorkel fire truck, and um, it did not do justice. It was it was a it was a it was blasphemy. Uh, the good thing about this particular version, it still has the functioning features to it. Uh, now the cab does not turn, but I mean the boom does extend in two parts, uh, and then it does rotate around. Uh, right after this, it was retooled, and then this whole boom section just became a one single piece. And it didn't do anything. It just sat there just like this and didn't do anything. Um, but you can tell this is the reincarnation of the snorkel fire truck. Uh, it's not good. It's just not good. It's just not good. They call it a bucket fire truck. It's a snorkel fire truck. All right, last one we got here. Um, all right, so I, I guess I misspoke earlier. I like when I get corrected, though, because then you guys can see I get corrected. This was the last version they did before it was retooled. Uh, so this was 2003 or 2004. Uh, this is 2003. So 2003 Hero City. This is another one of the sport tracks. Of course, the rubber band is just annihilated. Try to get those pieces off of there. Hopefully it didn't ruin the paint. Ooh. Ooh. Terrible. It's really, really bad. I'm going to have to uh, get some... Uh, cleaner i hope that it's just residue on there Ooh. you guys know the struggle's real that's why i tell everybody do not keep your stuff closed if it's got rubber bands on it open that up because it will ruin the model for sure i can't tell you how many times i've seen like 143rd scale hot wheel ferraris and stuff like that they did from back in the day and even the black box stuff where it's just absolutely just destroyed because it was it was kept in the package forever and it's it's kind of hard because it's a collector item but um so this one doesn't look too bad it looks like um just some residue on there it looks like i might be able to clean that up might have lucked out a little bit so there's your logo on there again opening here this piece did fall out so it's probably going to be a little bit too narrow again but 
The first edition I have is perfect. The rest of these, not that great. Uh, but that's the way it works. It's just the bed extender does fold out. The bed doesn't quite get down there all the way. It's relatively close. And then, of course, you just roll it back in there. Looks pretty good. It's actually a pretty cool feature. I wish they uh, would have kept it, but it's definitely a very expensive uh, feature to add in there. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about. Look at this crappy deco. And you know what? Whoever did it, you know what? That's your job. You know, you're doing what you got to do. Uh, but it's just, it's terrible. And of course, it had a purple base. Hero City was a rough time indeed in the matchbox history. So there you go. I have filled in a whole bunch of holes. I think it's 27 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20. All right, there we go. So we got it right. 27 editions. Um, pretty nice to bring just exclusively Matchbox into you guys. I know the castings are not the greatest, but as a completist, that's just the way it works. We are 100% completist at Matchbox. That's what we do. That's the main thing that is collected here at Level M. So if we don't have it, we need it. Now, the one thing I will tell you guys is I don't go past uh, 1980. is about as old as I go. Um, unless I can find a good deal on stuff, I'll pick it up. I do have a ton of Super Vast, a ton of Transitional, a ton of Lesney. Um, I do not have regular wheel. I don't have gray or black wheel, any of that stuff, because um, it just doesn't fit the collecting realm. But the rest of the stuff, if I get a good deal, I'll pick it up. So there you go. That is the newest mix. Let me know how many of these logo models you guys have. Uh, I still don't have complete sets of any of that stuff, not even remotely. Actually, I'm probably very, very close on the 2000 logos. Very, very close. Um, but the rest of those, who knows? Who knows? Some of those stuff, it's just, you don't even come across that stuff at toy shows or anything. So anyways, we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Matchbox for life. Level M diecast saying, peace.